keen voice of IP, and it was all seen as, at best, an interesting science experiment, uh, and at worst, something which was a waste of time. And it was only later that people realized that there was enough both capacity and possibilities in taking this as a long-term trajectory as opposed to simply as a niche for delivering uh, space launches and uh, classroom lectures and other type of very niche -y type of content. I suspect we're now at a point where it is no longer individually about technology pieces, but really getting a bunch of actors uh, to work together that haven't really had to talk much to each other. Uh, so it used to be that if you were in the ILEC world or in the cable world, yes, you were both offering internet access services, but except maybe having to interconnect at an exchange point, probably you existed in largely parallel universes. Now suddenly in the voice world, you'll have to worry about interconnecting. Uh, you may have to worry about features if you truly want to get uh, to something beyond just an IP replacement of four kilohertz audio. Uh, you may have to worry about common security threats. So suddenly industries that are on different floors of our building, if you like, uh, suddenly have a much closer need to work with each other, even though they might in some cases be competitors. The challenge, and this is one where we have had few real experiences on how to make that work, on going beyond things that individuals and individual companies can do is something approaching a national plan. Now, there isn't going to be the transition plan like for HGTV where we're just going to declare a flag day or a, I mean, a, a switchover day where there's a countdown counter at the bottom of a TV screen when the analog signal will go away. That seems unlikely and unnecessary, but we do have to think about a way that we can get out of the least common denominator problem. Uh, can we at least get large enough islands where some of the promises of IP-based technology, and I'm talking primarily on real-time communication, and I'm intentionally not just saying voice because I believe that if we just stick to voice, well, traditional as well as HD voice, I'm not sure that in and of itself that is going to be sufficient to make the transition, but I do believe that if we want to get to, for example, video, text-based communication, uh, increased programmability of the services, better integration into other services, that can't just be an island type thing. We've essentially done all the things that we could do as individual actors. We've developed hardware, we've developed uh, software, we've done obviously lots of standards development, but largely, except for the IETF, industry specific. We have um, the cable, cable Labs type of one, we have uh, Addis, we have uh, PGPP doing the industry specific things. Now is the next step, and I think the next 10 years will really be, EVA will succeed in having a uniform non-media dependent, non-transmission media dependent, end-to-end -end real time communication, or we'll have these sets of islands which are essentially electronic versions of the early days of a telephone where you had to have three instruments on your desk to reach different people with different telephone companies, and none of them would literally talk to each other. Ideally, I see the role of regulators in general, both at the state and the federal level, that it facilitates, particularly during time of a transition, that you don't have to relitigate the same issues again and again, or that you have a case where you have innovation not happening because existing actors see no interest in making it happen.